Prometheus. That may take maybe 30 minutes. And if time permits, we'll do Grifana. Now, Grifana <coughs> is not a free version. So it gives you two weeks. I think my, my two weeks are over. So I may need to log in with other ID. Otherwise, you can create a Grifana uh, free. I'll show you how to do that. So let's do Prometheus first. So Pr Prometheus, I have Prometheus, I have special uh, forum. System engineering. And I'm going to do Prometheus. I'm going to put the link in the chat. So before you do any software or anything installations and all, we need to know what is the purpose of Prometheus. <clears throat> so please understand, Prometheus itself is a beautiful thing. It is very similar as someone knows Datadog. It's very similar to Datadog. If someone knows New Relic, it's very similar to New Relic. If someone knows Dynatrace, it's very similar to Dynatrace. If someone knows App Dynamics, it's very similar to that. So these are all, or if you think CloudWatch, or if you think about Azure Matrix, it's very similar. Now, these are proprietary software, cost money, CloudWatch only works for AWS and Azure Monitoring works for Azure. But Prometheus works for everything, for Windows, for Linux, for Cloud, for Azure, for Google and everything. And it's a free. So right away, it's a choice of free and it can work everywhere, on-prem and all. CloudWatch doesn't work on-prem, Azure doesn't work on-prem. These are costly. So if you want free, this is your choice. Very popular in industry. The most feature is, first is monitoring. It monitor everything. Second, it can alert. If you define rule, based on that, you get alert notification. Third, it does have a nice prompt QL. So you do easily analysis. It does have an ability to pull the data, pull the data from various sources. So it has a data pull model, which is unique. All those things are push model, means machine send data to Datadog, machine send data to CloudWatch, machine send data to Azure Matrix. But here is a pull model. So if you have a refrigerator, it can pull. If you have a car door, it can pull. If you have a garage door, it can pull. So it can pull anything. That's the beautiful part about this. The only model has a pull model, which is kind of nice. And it allow API interface, HTTP API interface, so you can get the data. So I'm going to show you that detail. But it's simple, it's powerful. In 30, 40 minutes, you will be experienced in Prometheus. You don't need to be super duper genius. Why? Right? When you work in a real field, you will have enough time to play around. But 80% knowledge you can get in 20% time. It is simple okay. software to install, configure, and do that. Yes. Tushar, yeah. Okay, let's 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 back it up a little bit for mm -hmm. me, uh, just mm -hmm. to uh, help uh, frame it in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's compare. App, for me, I know App Dynamics and mm -hmm. uh, Splunk, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mm -hmm. Prometheus. Uh, I was getting there, but I did not. Mm -hmm spend time on it so both of them uh, splunk has agents that you uh, mm -hmm. use use uh, agents running on the server push the data to that and you uh, you are actually have the some kind of like you know plugin into the agent uh, agent has some plugin mm -hmm. to get the mm -hmm. data from mm -hmm. let's say mm -hmm. uh, java web server or mm -hmm. uh, web sphere or um, you know servers now, um, when it came to Kubernetes, we actually, that's where Prometheus come into play for us. But App Dynamics was used. Everything has an agent, and that's uh -huh. what is pushing the data, right? Uh -huh. And you configure the agent on getting the uh, data either as a file, for Tivoli, right? Tivoli is old. Uh -huh. uh, IBM. Tivoli, uh -huh. IBM product, right? I mean, there also you have the agent, and it configures uh it knows how to pull the right data right you're configuring it to pull it push it push it oh, all, push the, the, right. yeah, all push. the software we are using in, in splunk and all those are push model push model so prometheus is pull means a pull you model. have a server and you are connecting to a web server to get the data yeah i'm coming to that i'm coming to that that's I have... what you mean by pull versus put yeah. there is yeah. no agent 
there is an agent, but I'll show you what is the difference okay. here in a few okay. minutes when you see the architecture. Let's go to this architecture. <clears throat> so first of all, they have a server mm -hmm. and they have a time series database. In the time series database you can store in your local hard drive or you can store in a RD, RDS or any database. So far, they server. Now they have retrieval. So retrieval is a schedule base. It make a call to outside world. So it goes outside. It's it goes outside and try to get. In Splunk, they install agent and agent push to the central place where okay. data is stored in central. And then they do charts and graphs and queries and all. But this agent install, their agents know how to push it. Mm -hmm. While retrieval is, they have a configuration file here, which is called config. Using config, it knows this machine endpoint. And then it make a call to HTTP, and then it gets the data. So retrieval make a call. So it's going from here to the endpoint. It can be web server. It can be a garage door also. It can be a, a refrigerator. You can you can any any what you call device you want to monitor. It can. Now if this device doesn't have a web server, right, or it doesn't have a web endpoint, then it gives you a concept called exporter which is kind of agent, but it is a very interesting thing. Exporter, it stick with the machine and it expose HTTP endpoint for this Primathus. And Primathus will make call to that H H exporter endpoint and get the data. So if node is a web server, then it automatically get it. But node is database where you don't have HTTP, then you install exporter. Exporter will sense the data and that data exporter will expose as a HTTP endpoint and Prometheus will make a call and retrieve that data and then it will start further. So instead of agent, they have exporter, but exporter is not pushing the data. Exporter is exposing the data as a HTTP endpoint, but Prometheus will make a call to that exporter and then retrieve the data. That's the big difference. Questions so far? So it is competing on the S3 port? Sorry, it is, it's competing? Sorry, what is the question? Suppose I have a server uh -huh. and I'm running the server on HTTP port 80, right? Yeah. On the server. Okay. So retrieval is also happening on the same port which means uh, I have thousands of requests coming for data and this uh -huh. guy also is pulling the data from same endpoint. Yeah, so depends on, right? It just, just depends, right? Let's say if you have a web server, uh -huh. right? And you have, you're say, exposing 80, uh -huh. then this machine, you can configure exporter to expose data 8080 for this one so you will have your own port to expose the data many machines are having a dedicated endpoint for prometheus because it's very popular now so they have mm -hmm. a dedicated okay. endpoint which is not disturbing okay. your existing end user mm -hmm. but those okay. can only do if it is http but if your database or if your garage door mm -hmm. if your parking meter parking meter so for mm -hmm. that Prometheus gives you 100 plus exporter, 100 plus yes. exporter. You download and install. That exporter is nothing but Java or Python program. Mm -hmm. It reads that machine matrix. Matrix may be CPU, memory, IO, network. And then this one will expose its own endpoint. So retrieval can go to that endpoint, get that matrix and then store into that they call time series database. So hundreds of exporters are given to you. Just use it and boom, you can, your machine is now start collecting data and then it expose endpoint, but it doesn't push it. Prometheus has to make a call and retrieve that data. But this is huge, right? I mean, from architectural perspective, that mm -hmm. web server 8080 
-hmm. is going to take a load along with uh, the web server running on AT, right? Mm, no, 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 it's not a huge um, because you are not going to lay there every second, right? You are going to do interval, right? Every five minute one, and these are all what you call lighter call, like a ping call kind of thing, hello call. So you are not going to make that load. So think about even Kubernetes, all the container, every second, uh, what you call master is continuously knowing that hey, this container is up and running. So it's not going to create a problem. It's just like a lighter lighter call you're making you're okay, not... so on the other end on on mm -hmm. the web server side i have let's say log 4j framework right mm -hmm. uh, and it is uh, basically writing it into file right the mm -hmm. log 4j's mm -hmm. so this uh, uh, the web server will have to translate that data and push it uh, when the retrieval is asking for the data it has to retrieve that data from the log 4j framework uh, from that file and transfer that i could transform that into an http call and bring it to no 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 not not like that okay if it is a web server web server is exposing data like that yeah right 80 or 80 80 whatever it is prometheus say i want data now if this web server is a prometheus compatible prometheus compatible then it might be exposing different endpoint to get you okay. data. To get so what data. data it is getting, it is getting it, the same it, log no, 4j. No, 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 no. You decide what data you want. It's a matrix. It's not log 4j. It's a matrix. You want IO data. You want CPU data. You want memory data. You can request data. You want uh, uh, bytes data. HTTP traffic data. So you, it, you is, it is about uh, server data, matrix data, not yeah. about uh, it's not log a log. Analysis. It's not a log analysis. It is a matrix analysis. How my machine is doing? Is my machine oh. is healthy or not? Right. Oh, okay, okay. So it is about those data. Yeah. Uh, about and, the system data. Yes, and there are two options. Most of new verse, means web servers are Prometheus aware. It means they expose separate endpoint. But if they are not exposing separate endpoint, Prometheus give you exporter. You install exporter. Hmm. Exporter will take the machine health and keep that endpoint available for retrieval to make a call. So yes. web server even doesn't know that someone is getting the data from this exporter. So they give you hundreds of exporter free. You download yes. and your machine can be, you can install in your car too. This is like very simple. Yes. All those uh, IoT device, mostly people use Prometheus because it's a free. Like okay. think about so it's that. about the system metrics, uh, yes, which is basically. Um, okay, so what was that uh, Linux tool that I was using? Oh shoot, I'm forgetting. Nagios. Huh? Nagios. No. <clears throat> those gives memory, CPU, and those data, which is a Unix. Top. I forgot. top command. I forgot. I totally am forgetting. It's blanking out on that. So that kind of data is what Prometheus will. It does not bring the uh, the application level. Let's say I'm doing a. But you can do application one. if you want. So, like okay. example, if you want applications. So, this is my application. Let's say credit card application. Let's say Discover. Yeah. Yeah. So, when somebody call endpoint, uh -huh. like that, and then you are doing payment processing and all, and you want to know these information you want to provide. So uh -huh. what you can do, you can create an endpoint. Uh -huh. Retrieval will go here. And these applications can say like a, example, number of requests per hour. So they have yeah. a library. Application use the library. The okay. library, library will collect the data uh -huh. and then their local exporter will do endpoint. Okay. That endpoint through, they get the data. So you can say like example, how many people have requested in one hour. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the processing again? It's a custom matrix, right? You, you mm -hmm. create a matrix like example key will be key will. I'm just thinking key number of uh, first key is number of user requested, right? Number of uh, approval in one hour, number of uh, rejection in one hour. Yeah. Those are applications, and that you also you can send it. You can send those that those are called custom matrix. 
Okay, acha. Okay, okay, perfect. It's a I very it. popular, by the way. Just to give idea, right now it is so popular that most companies started using. So yeah. you will be surprised if you are going for data dog. So not data my mistake. DevOps interview, Premathas mm-hmm. will come in a discussion. Premathas yeah. and Grafana. These two comes in picture because Grafana is a graphics tools, visualization tool. Though Premathas has a graphics, but it's not a good graphics. Grafana graphics is really good, but Grafana is a so like what you call Grafana is the, your custom software. I mean, sorry, uh, commercial software. So you have to pay for that. Prometheus is free. So people like Prometheus and it works for almost everything because they have hundreds of exporters and you can monitor and these exporters are intelligent. It's not like uh, you have to write a code. It, it knows what to matrix perspective, like example, your car. So it knows what car matrix to monitor, like example, engine, example, certain thing. It is trained that exporters are trained for those type of machine. Garage door, <laughs> I have what, what you call those parking lot, parking machines. So if some factory, like there are machines are going like windmill and all, right? So you can create exporter for windmill and though you can create yourself or you can download it. And then those the entire wind farm you can monitor. You don't need a, a what do you call cloud or other thing, and this is zero dollar investment. So Grafana needs the Prometheus in the background. Grafana is independent software. Grafana has the ability to read data. So Prometheus get it, then store it. But Prometheus also export HTTP endpoint for Grafana, so Grafana can call Prometheus and do beautiful graphics. Beautiful okay. graphics. So, that's how it pro, Grafana mis, doesn't need Prometheus, but Prometheus can get, sorry, Grafana can go to Prometheus through HTTP. It can read all the data which you read and store in time series. So, Prometheus expose HTTP endpoint for Grafana or any other, uh, if you know Kibana, then Kibana also can get it. Or you can write your own API client, or you can create your Power BI or Tableau. And Tableau through you can get it, right? You can also create your own alert rule, and through alert manager you can do pager duty email. So this is like a huge actually. Trust me, it's not simple. It looks it shows, but because it's a free, people don't you know sometimes don't use it for big company, but you know it is very popular. That's why I'm. Co- what other component you have? So first component is server. Server has a time series data which is story. Retrievals are there, which reads data. It pull data from various sources. Then it store data into time series. Now this data we expose as a HTTP endpoint to Grafana or Power BI or application Tableau, like so they can do visualizations. Also, it has a concept called alert manager. Through that, you can say if CPU is 100%, 90%, you can have pager duty email, SMS, call. So there are built-in components are there. Also, you you can write here, you can also get from various sources, like example, some jobs or applications, push that, that mechanism you can create. So they have push gateway. So like example, if this guy cannot get it, they have a gateway where others can push the data and from there it pulls it. So they created like a, a hub, so people can push to that, and then it get it. By default, it knows Kubernetes because the containers which you have in this container, you can install exporter in container as a site card. And using that, it will expose the endpoint, and you can read it. It by default, it is having Kubernetes knows Prometheus. So by default, there is a endpoint for Prometheus. So it can pull all, like how many containers you have, how many parts you have, how many memory. It reads entire Kubernetes. By default, it is there. So you don't have to configure it. Good. Now, we have two choice to run. One choice is to run through this one. So let me show you. Uh, where is my Docker desktop? So Prometheus, okay. I'm going to install in my machine. Please understand what we are trying to do. I want to install, please pay attention so you will understand. 
So Prometheus, I'm going to install in my machine. In my machine, I have Docker desktop and Kubernetes is running. I will also configure Windows matrix. So exporter through Prometheus can read it and I can monitor my machine. That's all I can show you today because that's give you full control. The only one configuration file they have, only one configuration file. In that configuration file, what you want to pull, you define that. Second, you define rules. When you want to alert, you define that. And there are certain type of thing where you can do summary your statistics, you can define here. So when you do it yourself, you will understand. It's not a rocket science, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's start for Windows, so you will understand that. So first, let's download the software. So click here and find out Windows. This one is fine. So you can see here, you have Prometheus, right? And this one, it seems like a new version, so we'll take a new version. So I'm gonna take this one. Let's download that. So I click on it and it starts downloading. It's a pretty tiny software. Now it is downloaded. Let me know if you are able to download. Now, after you download, unzip that. So download and unzip that. So you have nice Prometheus library installed here, which is this one. Now you have, can see here, this is your Prometheus. This is a tool, this is the ML file, and this is the Prometheus exe. This is your other informations. But right now, that's all you need to get it, right? So first you unzip this, and when you unzip that, you get this information. Okay. Now, Prometheus and Prom tool. So we're going to use one by one so you can understand that. Any questions so far for downloading this library? Very simple. Now, go back to forum. So once we come here, we'll come here. Now, we this is like reference document just for exporter. So you can understand what are the exporters available. So if you click on that, right? So every, many people download Prometheus from like, you know, running code, configuring Prometheus to monitor itself. So there is a one configuration file and very simple, anytime, you want to configure, this is the section called scrap config. You define your job name. So like example, I want a job name is Windows. Then you define interval. What interval I want to monitor? Five seconds. Then you say static config. It means target. It means you are going to make a call to this port at 1990 every five seconds and you're going to get, so this one is interval. This one is going to get, make a call so, and get you all metrics. But you don't specify whatever metrics available, it's going to get it. But you can specify what metrics you want. So here you can say, I want to monitor this thing. So that's your specific thing. You can specify additional thing, like I want to me monitor memory or CPU and all. Otherwise, whatever this exporter gives you, it's going to get it. These three lines, let's say tomorrow, if you want to monitor, let's say database, you copy this three line and say job, redis, scope interval, this, static, give a port, it can be a HTTP port or it can be a network port. And that's it. If you want to monitor other, so you can at single point of time, you can monitor many, many, many resources. And based on the interval, our Prometheus will know how to make a call and get the data. If you want to export as an alert, you can configure alert manager, which you need to download it. And then you can say scope interval in 15 seconds. If something happened, there is a rule here. I don't think they define here. You can define rule here. If the rule fires, then using alert, 
it will send notifications. So this is only one file they have. This is a configuration file. I'll show you how to configure today. It's easy. Now, if you go back here, there is an exporter. And if you click on that, these are free exporters available. So if you click on that, you will find tons of exporters. Look at that, how many exporters they have. You have exporters for almost everything, all database in the world, right? So you don't have to write code. You just install in the database server and you will start monitoring. If you scroll down, hardware monitoring. You can do garage door also, camera also, everything you can monitor. It's beautiful actually. You can see, right, Dell hardware, Tesk, Bosch. You can also refrigerator, garage door, all. Just name it, right? You can do Cisco router, right? You can monitor that, right? If you see here, right? Messaging system. These are all exporter, ready to go, right? You can RabbitMQ and anything you want. Storage, HTTP, any web server you want to monitor, right? You can do that as well. Tons of, if you want to do logging, right? Other monitoring, just name it. It is one of the most popular, I would say. You can monitor Nagios. You can do any monitor you want, right? So beautiful. Like you can see tons of things available. And this is not easily available for anyone else. So you have this options available. Now, I'll go back here and scroll further. Now, we have an options called Download Windows Exporter. So basically, our My Machine is Windows. And I want to export Windows matrix to Prometheus. So Prometheus can read this matrix and show me on my screen. So click here and you should be finding Windows exporter. I found after like almost one or two days searching. So hopefully it will be available. So yes, it is available. Uh, if you scroll down, scroll down. Second, where is there? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it worked. You saw that? It works. Rajan, this one work first one. Okay, okay. I will check that out because my machine, uh, it is not. Uh, mine is a different problem, right? So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll check. Okay. So right now, this machine is running, and you can see it is running on a port. So it established the port 9182. What is that mean? This exporter is sensing all my Windows data and it exposing H HTTP endpoint port 9182. So now I need to tell Prometheus, go and get this data and then I can monitor it, right? So one step is done. I tried it. That's why I know it works. So this one is done. So now exporter is running because every time you're going to install exporter. Now come back. So that is part done. One second. Yes, this one. Now Prometheus by default run on 9090, right? But we have not started Prometheus. So let's see if I can run. Let me start a new window. Go to download. And I thought it's in directory, right? I did the directory, right? Prometheus was a directory. Yes, CD. Let me go to the directory. Prometheus was its own directory. So I'll go to that directory. Right? CD. So I'm here. So now I'm going to start Prometheus server. So Prometheus server. I started. Allow access. So Prometheus server started. It created time series database. It's loading and starting rule engine. Okay. Let's just start. Server is ready to receive web request. So it seems like it started, right? Now, by default, I believe it is reading 9,000, 9, Yes, here you go. See here, 90.90. So I installed Prometheus in my machine. Now, local host, 
So Prometheus is here. Now at this moment, if I have this much, if I click here, I can search because I only can search Prometheus. So if, we, if I search something Prometheus, I can get all the things what Prometheus is op offering, right? So I'll say Prometheus engine query. I click on that and execute. I can see some, these are key metrics. I can see that because by default it monitor Prometheus. So Prometheus, let's see what I can see here. Let's say it's a request portal. I execute these are the data it is getting. So right now, this is all itself. Prometheus itself is monitoring itself and you can see how it get the data. So first is this one. This is their key, what item they are monitoring. So this is like a Prometheus HTTP request. And then it says how many requests is coming, it monitor and then key values are there. It has two things. This is like a promo query, but you can also do graph and you can monitor graph also. Whatever you want, you can do graphical monitor also. But the things you want to know, like right now, if you say I just started, so you can see here the data you can monitor here. Graphs are here. I just started. Now I can specify here like what type of graph I want. I can you know customize the graph a little bit here. Now if you want to add additional additional resource because Prometheus monitoring Prometheus is one thing, but you want to have additional resources. So for there, we need to configure. Give me a second. We need to configure configuration in status configuration. So if I click on configuration, this is Prometheus configuration. So you can see here what happened if you read carefully. For alerts, alert manager is configured and this is target. Target means we have not specified whom to send message. Scrap config, there are job manager, only configure Prometheus. So you can see here Prometheus is being monitored. What are the things we are monitoring? HTTP timestamps, true, we are monitoring. Track timestamp, we are not monitoring. Scrape interval 15 seconds. So we are getting data in 15 seconds. Protocol, we are using this. And the target 9, 990, 9019, because that's the port it is monitoring, which is Prometheum itself. Now I want to add my own port and I want to monitor that. And because my Windows expo exporter is sending data, I want to monitor. So how do I know that is coming? So somehow, I need to add such kind of information to Prometheus configuration file. Then I will be able to see that. So if I go to status and if I look for tar non target, won't help me. Uh, we saw configuration, right? Uh, let me see. Yeah, service directory. Service directory, you can see right now it only show Prometheus that this is monitoring Prometheus only. So when I configure my windows, you will see windows. If you click here, you get that detail about that. Right now we are monitoring only one. But if I if I configure windows, it should show here, which we'll do in few seconds. This is a time street. So now the question is where is my config file where I can add my windows information? So let's go to that directory. Out of this file, I should see one way config file that should allow me to monitor my Windows machine. So let me see YAML file. It used to be config file, so I'm assuming it should be there. Uh, let me let me open it. This is yeah, this is the perfect. I think they changed the YAML. No problem. So this is YAML file. See here clearly. Please pay attention. Three segment. Very simple file three segment anybody can understand first segment is the rule so you can specify rule based on that it will be evaluated and you can say what to do which is the notification so you can send email so this is the email notification this is the rule you can add your rule file you can have multiple rule right now we don't have any rule scrap config we only have one job and we are saying monitor local 9090 so if I say I want to monitor my Windows machine because my Windows machine is right now running on port 9182. So I'm going to copy this. See here, I'm going to copy this portion, Control C. And I'll say this is my Windows. Job name is Windows. 
and port name is 9182 9182 I save this thing and I stop my I stop my Prometheus control C I stop it and I start so this time it will read two jobs it will read one for Prometheus and one from Windows so seems like it started already so if theory is right if I go back to my uh, what do you call Prometheus is that yeah I should get here Windows if I'm refreshing here I got Windows it means it knows the active target it's there so if I go back to now my graphs, I'm here. I can now search Windows because here, if I click here, uh, sorry, here, I get all those options. And if I see now Windows CPU, let's say I want to do CPU. See, I can see all Windows matrix I started getting. Now, let's say I want to have a CPU monitor. Let's say CPU, something I want to monitor. Uh, CPU. Let's do memory, maybe Windows memory. So again, what we want to measure here. So Windows memory. Let's say I want to remember just thinking virtual memory. So if I specify that and execute it, now my this information I can graph that. So I can see that it, now this is my memory. Now let's say I can I want to add another panel. I can add many panel of, of my choice, but like now let's say I want to add another one. So let's say I want to say CPU. So clock interval total. I'm just trying to do that. So you can see here all the information which I have in my machine. I can I can get that. Now if I continue that, I can see graphs, and it's actively monitoring. If I want another panel, I can click on panel and say now I want to monitor. Let's say I/O. So Windows right io so let's say cpu uh, os uh, let's say read, read right right io i can now monitor that aspect and click on graph and you can create the aspect on that now when you are doing this exercise you can also have alerting so you can specify alert Right now, I do not have any alert. I have alert file. Why? Because we do not have a rule yet configured. But if I configure rule here, right? Example, a rule here that any matrix I receive and those matrix number are here. So example, the matrix which I was doing here. So let's example, if I go to Windows, Let's take a CPU will be easy. CPU time total. Let's say I do so. This one is the one parameter, and I can say that if this goes just an example, if this goes up to this thing, I want to fire that fire the alert. If that kind of rule, if I have specified here, then the rule will fire, and every time rule will fire, we should be able to see that rule. The information here every activity we can see here so that way how many rules do you fire what happened you can see those activity here in alert though we do not have rules set up now this tv data status is their data time series data where they can see all the things now rule perspective we do not have any rules right now that's why we are not going to see alert this tv is their internal time series database which is very powerful which allows us to do like statistics, like weekly, hourly, monthly, yearly, like that. And then they have uh, one more thing they have is the HTTP endpoint. Second, uh, is a target. Yeah, this is our our target. Basically, this is our Windows target. Windows are Windows exporter is coming from 9182. So if you click on that, this is 9182. It's Windows. These are all data. You're getting and you can see that this is all data is coming from Windows target. And this one is a Prometheus target. Everything is getting through a port and this information 
is pulling by Prometheus automatically to get the data. So if you're monitoring like a bunch of other devices, all endpoints will be here. And then this endpoint, if someone wants to read, like example, Grafana wants to read, they can get this detail through Prometheus servers. So Prometheus servers API through, they can say, I want Windows data and particular metrics, you can put, retrieve that. So Prometheus concept is very simple. First, collect, like pull, my mistake, pull the data. So you pull from various sources. Then you collect and summarize. So you collect and summarize in time series. Then you have a query. So you can do query for your own analysis or graphics. And then it is exposing as a HTTP interface exposing for others, like example, Grafana or others to pull this data by HTTP endpoints from the time series. And time series is where they store the data. Now pulling comes from various sources. If device can automatically expose, then it pull it. The pulling enable happen through configuration, which we did just now. If you remember, we did a we did a configuration for Windows. As long as configuration has this, Prometheus can pull from various sources. If there is a device which is called dumb device like database, then Prometheus gives you exporter, which you install the exporter, and then the exporter will expose this database data details which Prometheus can pull. So these are like four steps, right? You install exporter you configure exporter start pulling store data in time series then you can query they use prompt query to prompt get and then you also expose to the http endpoint questions a couple of things uh, Tushar. so uh, you did run the exporter for windows right mm -hmm. yeah. that is what uh, that is yeah. what is uh, mm -hmm. uh, allowing prometheus to pull the data right um, so what is prompt queue Sorry, what is prompt queue? Prompt queue. Prompt queue is the query. So when you come here, when you are writing here, right? I'm writing query here. See here, I'm just uh -huh. writing this this thing. I'm yeah. picking that, right? So when I write right. this thing, and you search execute, that time it is using prompt ql. Prompt ql, which is nothing but the query. They use the query, like this thing. So basically, using this one, I am able to query the data. So like example, I want to filter this, so I can write how to filter this data for that it is using prompt query its own query basically it's query analyzing their own query like example it's a prom prometheus uh, prompt query is prometheus, prometheus uh, yeah. query language yeah, it's their own query that allow you to uh, get analyze the, the data metrics data that is in ts uh, the time series exactly and okay. then yeah and then the other thing that um, tushar um, mm -hmm. the exporter uh, uh that has been created uh, it is also going to use the cpu but th these are lightweight kind of yeah these are lightweight it doesn't it, it, basically the it's a what do you call designed to not impact the system health at all there might be a little bit impact but it may be a one okay. percent it is okay. designed M whenever you monitor there is a little bit impact but you are having an interval right you're not monitoring every second you're monitoring a five second interval so the impact will be minimal. So this uh, this this exporter will have to have permission on the server to collect the data, right? Right, right, right. right. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, it's, it's continuously going through, and you can mm. you can no, it, this is like a table. This is a graph. Ideally, this is for troubleshooting purpose. Ideally, people use Grafana for monitoring this. The Prometheus mm. is most important is collecting data getting the data, matrix data. And then Grafana on top of that allows you to do super duper matrix, super duper. So Grafana is a beautiful graphic. So if you just search in Grafana, just an example. Prometheus, the graphics is like rudimentary, right? So if you see Grafana, this this is what Grafana is. The graphics is huge, super. So you can, you can do significant graphics through Grafana. But the Grafana needs data from Prometheus, right? That's why in Prometheus, Grafana doesn't have a way to get the data. Grafana is not good at getting the data. Prometheus is good at getting the data. And and, Promet and Grafana is good in graphic the data. 
So this kind of go hand to hand. Whenever you say Prometheus, you will see Grafana because Grafana does not have a way to get the data that fast or that capability. It's all about Prometheus. Uh, but Grafana is working on the on the STP query. I mean, making the getting yeah. the data from time series yeah. or it has to get the data in a table form. No, no, it, it doesn't matter technically. So Grafana is getting data through HTTP. HTTP okay. And then when you make a query, you actually get data in a JSON form. And then okay. it translates the data into the way it wants. Though I'm sure they might have other endpoint also. It is not okay. simple software. It might be pulling from various port, but they don't have a way to monitor machine database Grafana doesn't have. So Grafana use Prometheus exporter. But Prometheus Why I'm asking is, uh, it maybe looks stupid, stupid. I can mm -hmm. ask a stupid question, oh. Priyank is okay. <laughs> oh. Sorry, what is it? So I, I can give uh, sales data and Grafana will do a great job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It is designed for Grafana. Grafana is nothing but a graphics. It yeah, is so. Graphics. If it, it is, is good, uh, uh -huh. they may be trying to capture the uh, compete against Power BI. No, no, Power BI is a reporting tool. This is a visualization tool. So Power BI has its own capability. They have some similarity, but there are quite differences. See, Power BI, you generate your own dashboard, right? You yeah. generate on dashboard. Right, right. This has fixed data. Here, here is a matrix, all matrix. So but they do have okay. a graph like these charts, right? They have charts, yeah, yeah. limited charts, it's six or seven, right? It's not like a Power BI has hundreds of charts. Right? Yeah. 